So this test, what you can do is we're going to um, get her to close her eyes. We're going to keep her um, head still and then we're just going to ask her to turn her trunk and shoulders and hold that position for about 30 seconds. So this is a sustained torsion test. And then she can come back to the centre and we're asking about any symptoms, whether that's causing any dizziness or any of her symptoms that she was um, reporting. And then she'll go to the other side and hold that for 30 seconds so it's a sustained position and then coming back to the centre. Now, we can compare that then. So here's where we're tr trying to, again, change the input or compare the input. So this time we're just going to do an on block where her whole body and her trunk, so eyes closed, and we're going to rotate, hold that for 30 seconds, see if that causes any symptoms, come back to the center, and then again going to the other side, holding for 30 seconds and then coming back to the centre. So if it was more neck, we would um, be assuming that she would get symptoms with the torsion, torsion one and not so much the on block. Now there will be some people who, if they've got a combination, they might get um, symptoms with both or some people who just don't like their, their afferents being messed with. And we found that in a study that we did in some normal patients, they actually got symptoms with both of these tests, but very few got symptoms with just the torsion test. So it's probably useful if they do get symptoms with the torsion, do the on block just to confirm whether it's just that general sensitivity or not. Or it could mean that they've got a mixed um, combination of things causing it. Now, that won't really trigger this, the vestibular system that much. So then you can look at a, what was called a head neck differentiation test. So here we hold the head still, eyes closed again, and then Charlotte's going to swivel backwards and forwards about 45 degrees as fast as she can. And we're trying to keep her head still. So we're really just messing with those spinal afferents as much as possible, and then stop, and then see if that causes any symptoms. Okay, and then we can then compare that to if we just do eyes closed and we're just going to swivel side to side on block. So we're not doing anything to the neck. Okay, and then if somebody's got a vestibular problem, this one is more likely to stir them up than, than the other one. So you don't have to do all of these tests. It's more if you're really trying to differentiate out, um, but certainly you can add these things in because it just gives you more clues as to what might be going on.